Hi, this is Ryan from Denver Outdoor Kitchens. Today I'm going to be covering how to load in the Denver Dynamic Components SketchUp library into SketchUp. So once I have my OneDrive link, I'm just going to click next to the folder and then click download. The file is about 160 megabytes. And once it's downloaded, I'm going to click on the um, show and folder icon or wherever I have it downloaded. And then I'm going to extract that file. So I have to right click and then click extract all um, because it is a zip file. So once it's extracted, then I can decide uh, where I want to store it. So I actually just have this folder stored on my desktop. Um, so I just wanted to show you kind of an example. You can, you know, link it wherever you'd like, but I have mine saved under uh, just SketchUp library on my desktop. And then once I open up SketchUp Pro, what I'll do is I'll go over to the right hand side in the components tray and then click the details button. So it's a little arrow that's pointing to the right. So I'm left clicking that and then left click open or create a local collection. And then I'm pointing SketchUp to my desktop. So here's the Danvers SketchUp library folder that I just downloaded. So I'm going to highlight that and then click Select Folder. So what should happen is this viewing window on the side should update and I should have my models uh, populated here in alphabetical order. After that point, uh, I would also go to Details and then click Add to Favorites. So that way, every time you open up SketchUp, this components drop down tray will show up on your navigation pane. So if I go under recent, it'll show up here and it'll also show up under my favorites. So I can easily swap between the elements line that I have downloaded and the regular Danvers SketchUp library that I have downloaded. It's important to note also that the Danver material file, which looks like a disco ball, has to be loaded into my model before um, I drop any cabinets in. So this material file actually contains the powder coat colors that you're going to select to change the powder coat finishes. So I have my template set up to already have this in place, but if I don't have this in place, I just want to drop this in and then I can right click and I can hide this or I can hide it up top under edit. And once I drop in an object or a model, like let's say a burner base, I can right click it, go under dynamic components and then component options and then change the uh, powder coat finishes under front finish to whatever I need it to be. So in this case, I'll just make it Clementine as an example, and my finishes should change. I hope this video is helpful and um, you were able to successfully load in the Danver Components Library. Thank you.